Hey guys, Texas Garden Guy here, and you might remember last year I grew this giant sweet potato in a three gallon pot. Insert clip here. The sweet potatoes, I don't know when to harvest these. This is one sweet potato plant. I am growing these in a three gallon bucket. That might be full of sweet potatoes. That whole three gallon bucket might be full of sweet potatoes for all I know. That pot feels like there might be some potatoes in there. Oh my God, look at that root. Should we just yank it up? I wanna see if these sweet potatoes are good. Just to show y'all the immense size of this one sweet potato plant. Oh, the ants are all over it. Let's cut it. Is the entire pot full of ants. And look at that giant root. Oh my God. Is that a sweet potato? This pot is full of ants. All right, we're gonna dump it. Look at that root. I may have to cut the entire pot. There's ants all up in this daggum pot. That may be the downfall of the potato. Here we go. Let's see what we got. There's something. I think I see a potato in there. Let's see, let's see. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, look at that potato. Oh my God. <laughs> look at the size of this sweet potato. So this year, I'm gonna ditch the three gallon pot and we're gonna actually move to one of these 15 gallon smart pots. These are pretty heavy duty fabric pots. Uh, they last quite a long time and uh, they're really durable and they'll make it just that much easier to go ahead and flip the pot and dump it all out and find all the sweet potatoes. But you can actually see uh, that the sweet potato is like sputting or whatever they call it. Uh, I don't know what it's called, uh, but it's already growing roots and stuff like that. So we're gonna get this filled up with soil. We're gonna plant it and then we're gonna get it put in, into place. Uh, this is one of the few things here in the Texas area that you can grow in the middle of summer when it's super, super hot. Sweet potatoes do not care if it's hot outside. They grow even better. So this is a perfect time to get this going. And uh, let's go ahead and get us a soil mix ready for this smart pot. So I got the big heavy duty gorilla cart. And today we're gonna be using a mixture of living earth organic garden soil and then living earth organic compost. Um, you can use whatever mix you like. Uh, if you just want to buy something that's already pre-mixed, all good together, um, go ahead. Uh, we're also going to add some perlite. We got a gallon, if I can get the lid off, of perlite right here. No, it's not styrofoam. That is perlite. And that is going to help out with drainage in this container. So we'll add this last. All right, so we're going to do two bags of the organic compost and two bags of the organic garden soil. Uh, we'll go ahead and Cut them open and get them spread out. Look at that beautiful black compost. All right. Check it out. That is good compost. All right, now we will, uh, I think what we're actually going to do is we're going to do a sandwich of this perlite. We're going to put the perlite in the middle. I've got about, this is about a gallon of perlite. Some people do like a 50-50 perlite soil mix. Um, this is probably, I don't know, it's a lot of perlite. We're going to add two bags of the organic garden soil. So the compost was, each bag was two cubic feet and these are one cubic feet. So we're doing a two to one ratio compost to garden soil. And I guess 10% with the perlite. But each their own, you can make your own mix. This is just what I'm doing. And you could just use the regular soil if you wanted to. Um, if I'm doing stuff in containers, I typically will add, you know, mix the compost, mix in some perlite, it just allows for really good drainage. And this is like six six uh, cubic feet total. The bag is not gonna hold that much, but I got other stuff. So when I mix, I usually do it in bulk and that way I can kind of spread it around and put it in places I need to. You could probably get away with half this in a 15 gallon pot, maybe a, a third of this in a 15 gallon pot, honestly. So in the organic garden soil, you're getting some more of that, that uh, sandiness and uh, some more carbonaceous material, but it's good stuff. Once we get this all mixed up, it's going to be a really good blend. Let's get to mixing. We're just going to do the best we can with this. Some people like, I think I said in the previous video, I've seen people with like cement mixers and that would probably be the best thing. I think you like an electric 
Hey, post down the bottom that my wife needs to let me get an electric cement mixer for mixing soil, please. As if I have control. <laughs> this is true. So we're going to mix this the best we can. I'm sure there's better ways of blending this, but we're doing the best we can by hand. And as I'm filling up my pots or filling up the beds, uh, I'm constantly mixing this up. Like I'll go down an inch and then mix it all up. So we'll do the best we can. And if we need to add anything, we can always go back and add more. So, all right. That looks pretty good for now. I'm not hit one of those little pockets with the perlite in it, but it's okay. Not a big deal. I can always get more perlite. All right. So let's get our pot filled. So this, uh, this cart, this gorilla cart, will actually hold, I believe, 1,200 pounds. 1,200 pounds, and uh, it does a really good job of carrying all the soil around. Uh, gorilla cart, I've had gorilla carts for years. I had a small one uh, that I, I still use, but uh, for the bulk of all the work I do here in the garden, this cart is the workhorse. It is huge, it is heavy duty, and you can see it, it's holding four bags of soil that could probably hold two more, you know? And this is my favorite work table. I love this thing too. All right, so we got our fabric pot, our smock pot. We're gonna go ahead and start filling it up. Um, as I go, I'm gonna dig deep into the wheelbarrow. So I go all the way to the bottom. Uh, what's really cool about these smart pots is they're built out of this thick felt fabric and they last for like five years. They're really awesome. They have a heavy duty liner on the bottom. And what's cool is like, so if you plant like a tree or something in this, what's gonna happen is roots are gonna be able to, they'll be able to permeate through the fabric. But when they're exposed to oxygen, it uh, prunes them. So say a root goes all the way to the edge, it goes through and it feels that oxygen, it automatically prunes it back and it starts shooting up roots all the way throughout. So having a pot like this, especially a durable one, that's made in the USA um, is really cool. We're gonna put as much soil in here as, as I can pick up. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is the handles. And they said the handles, the handles are pretty heavy duty, but I'm not trying to chance it and drop this potato. But we'll get it about a third of the way. I wanna bury this thing pretty deep, honestly. And uh, sweet potatoes are pretty drought resistant. So once this is like planted and established, you don't really need to water it every day. Obviously I'm going to, but you know, I had my a couple of friends that have grown sweet potatoes in the past and they said they plant them and they didn't forget about them. So it's kind of cool. We actually, the, the, the vines from sweet potatoes were so crazy last year. They were growing all the way out the greenhouse and uh, the pot that grew this had roots growing out the bottom between the bricks and then into the ground. It's pretty nuts. And this was probably, I guarantee it was twice the size whenever I pulled it out. It is uh, cured in my pantry for almost a year. I mean, it was probably twice the size when I dug it out. So we got the pot about halfway filled up. You can come look. It's about halfway, maybe a little less than halfway. We can but see through it. But it's a big potato. So not, although it is not technically a potato, this is not a nightshade. You can eat the, the, the yam and you can eat the entire vine as well. So we're gonna go ahead and set this. I don't think we even need to be, I don't think it even has to be pointing up. We're just gonna set this in here. And you can come look how I, how I did it. We're just gonna set it in the soil and we're gonna bury it. Perfect. All right. And I was kind of worried about it being too heavy, but it seems pretty good. I mean, I think we're gonna be okay. We're not going too far with it, so. Uh, if you have a bad back or you're not super strong like me, um, <laughs> you're probably gonna want to fill this up in place. And if you were doing a pot any bigger than this, and depending on the type of soil you're using, this could get a lot heavier. So you just wanna be cautious of that. I'm only doing this because I'm literally going right there with it when I'm done. And so if it falls, I can just scoop it back up into the pot. There we go. There we go. And we're gonna we're gonna kind of put this in full sun. Um, it's gonna be under the greenhouse, but it's not really gonna get much shade. It's gonna get pretty much full sun the entire time, um, and that's what sweet potatoes like. So 
because once we start watering, uh, it's going to sink. And you can come back and you can you know, add more soil on top. But uh, it should be good. All right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and let's take the tag off. Check out Smart Pots. Uh, be on the lookout. I will be doing a lot of projects with Smart Pots. They sent me a lot of cool products to try. So I'm, I'm excited to see uh, how good these were. I, I have not had great success with fabric pots in the past, but they were always those cheap rip-off ones from Amazon. Uh, they weren't name brand from uh, Smart Pots, you know, made in the USA. So uh, don't go on Amazon and buy something if it's advertised as smart pots go to the actual site and buy it from them uh, because a lot of people just rip off the name rip off the ip all right so we're just going to set it right there and uh, it'd be so funny if it uh grew through the bag and into the ground again that'd be hilarious i don't know we'll see how we'll see what happens but here we go lift with your knees not with your back yeah we're gonna set it right here Next to my low quad, right in the entrance of the greenhouse, we're going to pack it in a little bit. Shoot, we may even add some more soil. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the hose and we're going to water this. All right, here we go. We're going to water this in really, really well. That uh, sweet potato has been in the pantry for almost a year now, huh? It's been crazy. Uh, so, like I said, with the soil mix, now we went with the compost, the garden soil mix, and the perlite because it's in this container and it's going to allow for really good drainage. Being that it's the first watering, we're going to get it really heavy, um, but we're actually supposed to get some rain this week, uh, tomorrow even. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, as I said before, scoop tails are pretty drought resistant. They're something that most people grow them in the middle of summer. Although we're coming into September here in the Houston area, it doesn't really, we don't get our first freeze until like maybe first week in January, last week of December. So look out for videos on the sweet potatoes. Uh, we're going to try to do more things with sweet potatoes this year. I, I, I can see we didn't eat the one that we, we grew last year. I just, I left it and I wanted to see how it went. So, uh, but stay tuned and we will do follow up videos on the sweet potato. Make sure you comment down below and follow me on all social media platforms. There's Texas Garden Guy everywhere and we'll see you on the next video.